Praise the Lord. My name is Solomon Kidulu Talemwa. I'm in senior two. And I go to Ndeje Sigana Secondary School. Uh, I love the Lord. And I have been in Scripture Union for as long as I can remember. My mother used to take me to the Scripture Union comes when I was really young. And since then I have been an active goer of the camps. Uh, today someone is going to be about the tongue. And we get that from the book of James chapter 3. The book of James chapter 3 summarizes what the tongue can do and what the tongue can't do. And uh, the tongue is a very small object but has the power to build and destroy. So we therefore have to need, therefore we need to use our tongues to build those around us. And then this question comes to us, how can we do this? We need to be quick to listen, that is one. If we listen, we can be changed. We can also relate with other people's perspectives. Because if we listen, we can get to understand what people really think about us and what people think about everything before we speak. Number two, we should be slow to speak. This implies that we have to carefully choose the words we speak. In fact, we should think through the effect of the words that we speak before we utter them. Many a times we just speak because we want to speak, but we should really think about the words we are going to speak because these words can either destroy somebody or can give life to somebody. Proverbs chapter 18 verse 21 adds emphasis to the fact that the words we speak carry a lot of power that can build or destroy. Even James says that the words we speak can set the tongue, can set a forest on fire. So therefore, we need to speak words of life. Parents, the words you speak to your children should bring, give them life. Teachers, the words you speak to your students should give them life. Then number three, we need to be slow to anger. This is because when we are angry, we tend to speak words that cause hurt and pain. Hence, we should practice self-control, patience and forgiveness, such that our words do not cause wounds to the people around us. Luke chapter 6 verse 45 enlightens us on the fact that our tongue problems are our heart problems. What we speak is what our heart feels. And we cannot deal with our heart problems on our own. Therefore, we need to tame the tongue. And we cannot tame the tongue with our own strength. Only Jesus has the capacity to deal with our heart problems. So let us invite Jesus in our hearts today. Let us bring him in our life so that he can tame our heart to speak good words, to speak words that bring life. In conclusion, there's a story about a boy whose mother's words were the basis of his, resi of his resilience, motivation, and hard work. We have all heard of Benjamin Solomon Carson. His mother spoke words of life to him when no one else did. She encouraged him and assured him that he could do anything anybody can do, but only him could do it better. Benjamin was a very slow learner. In fact, people referred to him as a dumb person. But because his mother believed in him and because his mother spoke words of life unto him, he became the first black person to separate the Siamese twins. And we now know him as one of the best neurosurgeons the world has ever had. Therefore, from what I have, from what I have spoken here today is that we should be quick to listen, we should be slow to speak, and we should also be slow to anger. This goes to children and uh, the students and the parents everywhere that whenever we are socializing with anyone, we should be careful of the words we say because these words can really hurt a person and this person will really feel bad in his life. So I want to urge you, parents out there, the children, the students, to think thoroughly about the words you say, about the words you speak, so that, that, so that the words you speak unto a person will build him and not destroy him. Amen.